Thanks. Um, well, first, I'd like to thank everybody for uh, uh, coming to the conference for the second year in a row. This has been uh, a really interesting evolution when we started in, in Dave Tuthill, uh, let's see, I think a while back for the last year conference, contacted me and made some arrangements through NASA. And the next thing I know, I'm writing this proposal to NASA to underwrite uh, the, the ET conference. And it's been uh, very successful for both years in a row. Um, to follow up on you know all the comments, the, the two things that I think I have to add, because I'm not one of the people that you know works at Rick's level or all of your level actually understanding the technology and the procedures to come out with ET estimates. But I do work in water resources systems analysis, water resources planning, watershed model development, that type of thing. So I definitely end up using all the information that comes out of it and see how valuable it is. And, and I've also worked because of some, some of the position I'm in being the director of an institute in, in being able to advocate for programs in Washington. So there's, there's two things, I think, in terms of moving forward that haven't been said that, that should be said. The first one is, is it, it came up at a discussion uh, a couple days ago when we were talking with uh, some of the staffers for Idaho's uh, federal delegation. And one of the things is, is that um, you know, the, the, the big issue is Landsat and making sure the thermal band is on there. But it's going to be a lot easier to sell this if in your back pocket you know all of the important uses for Landsat, for all of the bands. And so making sure you have a fact sheet that says, you know, I know how to use this band, I know how to use it. We, that's not our particular interest. But when you're talking about putting a billion dollar satellite up there, it's easier to start off and say, this is incredibly value as a satellite, and then narrow it down to the discussion of why the thermal band has to be in there. And any time you talk to anybody in, in terms of not just the federal delegation, but just in a general discussion, not having it narrowed immediately to the thermal band is like, well, why are we going to put a satellite up there to do this one thing? And the reality is, is Landsat is used to do a lot of things. I think this is the, the strongest community and the, most, the community that does the most advocacy for Landsat. But there's definitely a lot of other uses. And, and really being able to show the broader use and the broader benefit uh, is, is very useful. And then making the argument for the thermal band it has this very, very important use. And so it's kind of like starting off and broadening the discussion but narrowing it very quickly because that becomes a little easier to sell when you're talking to delegations, you're working with agencies, you're working with the general public of, of seeing all that. And, and maybe that will help some of the other communities that use a lot of the information from the Landsat to sort of organize this degree and be able to you know, say, this, this is really important for a lot of uses, and here's why it's important to our community. Um, the, the second thing is, is that there's nothing like getting long-term sustained support for embedding the information that comes out of uh, the, the satellite uh, sort of in, in an agency. And if you think about it, you know, why do we have this wonderful stream monitoring what network that the USGS maintains? And, you know, their website just keeps getting better and better and better. It's like, I don't even have to work to put together daily flow hydrographs for streams across the nation. It's like, obviously, everybody sees the use force and how important it is in water resources management. But it was something that started, you know, a long time ago with technology. And it's adopted as a core part of the USGS mission, especially within the, the uh, hydrologic water resources uh, directorate at the USGS. And when you think about precipitation gauging or snow tail gauging and that being part of the National Weather Service, which rolls up through commerce, and if you look about uh, some of the statistics in USDA, it's obvious there's a lot of really good partners from the federal agencies working in this community. But I think there needs to be some uh, advocacy for trying to work to embed this in the mission of one of these data dissemination agencies, and either the USGS, National Weather Service, or USDA, because the second it becomes part of their mission and they see this as, as a real value of this is why we exist. This is why we're important for advancing uh, the economy of the United States, the, 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 you know, the, the quality of life for people in the United States. It's going to be easier to advocate for long, you know, the, the, the long-term sustained funding for the program. And where I look at the technology of where metric is and where use of uh, satellite-based information for estimating ET is, it's close to the point of being able to take these satellite images, go into processing, and have it available at these watershed level efforts. We may not be there yet, but I think it would be worthwhile to be start thinking about you know, what agency would take that over in terms of information dissemination. Because right now, when, when you would look at it, you'd say, oh, we want to know 
what the ET is for the East Snake Plain, and you put a project team together and you work on it. It seems like we're, we're getting to the point where you could actually maybe not quite automate this, but when you see the information produced through the Aeros Data Center and produced through uh, the USGS water supply reports, and you realize every five years the USGS puts out a water use report. Well, that water use report is all about what got taken out of the river. It's not about what got used, and it seems like this could be a vitally important piece of information that goes in the water use report, considering they break it down by state, they break it down by watershed, and they break it down by county. And this is one of those things that I think it's ripe to move that in, in, into the agency. And that would require not just advocating for launching the satellite, but be advocating for what would amount to a plus up in, in one of the federal agency's budget to take on this mission. And it obviously could not, and, and plus up means you would actually add money to the agency's budget and not just tell them to do something and take money away from someplace else, which would be an offset. And, and, and that's something that in terms of working with the agency, it means being more broadly engaged with the agency's mission and working with the appropriate people there that see this as something that you know, the federal agency would see as a, a, a definite asset to have funding to do this, take it on as part of their core mission, and be able to um, um, you know, continue funding. Because once it's in there as part of their core mission, they will advocate for it year after year after year. Um, I've, I've seen this in, in, in many different circumstances. And in essence, once someone owns the information and the data distribution of the information, it's going to be a lot easier in the long run to kind of sustain the program there. So that, that's the only kind of two things that I would see there is as you move forward, these would be more strategies looking for the longer term sustainable funding of, of this type of program and also advocating for the, you know, the launching of Landsat 9 and Landsat 10, making sure the thermal bands are on there. But, but those would be the two things that I would see as moving forward that should be considered and thinking about broadening, and I, I, you know, everybody sort of mentioned this, broadening the user group, but also broadening the discussion so everybody says, oh yeah, why aren't we doing this? I mean, we do have the snow tell stations. We do have the precip stations. The precip stations actually have ET on them. <laughs> You know, we do have uh, the, the, the groundwater levels. We do have the, uh, the water flows. And the USGS puts out the water supply. It seems like it's an easy argument to make. Well, this is something that should be out there and made available because this is important for everybody to, news, uh, to use, especially in the Western United States. So with that, those are the two comments I have. And <laughs> good conference.